the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the charming Johann Strauss operetta, Rosalinda, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, lovely Anna Mary Dickey. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to travel to Vienna for one of the most delightful operettas of all time. Under its original title, Deflate a Mouse, this work is packing them in at New York's Metropolitan Opera. Lovely Anna Mary Dickey is Rosalinda, and I am her husband with the roving eye, Henry Eisenstein, as we bring you the great Johann Strauss music for Rosalinda. <laughs> Rosalinda, who's that singing? Oh, it's Alfredo Alivanto, the most romantic singer in Vienna. I won't have my wife serenaded by a soupy troubadour. Now, Henry, you're not going to hit him again. Well, there shouldn't be a law against hitting tenors. Why, everybody wants to hit tenors. Well, I just hope you enjoy your week in jail for hitting him the other night. Listen to him. His mother must have been frightened by an operetta. <laughs> But don't you like the song? I'd like to tear them apart note by note. Did you have to slam the window? Sweetheart, if you want somebody to serenade you, why not listen to a man sing? A baritone. Rosalinda, love of mine, hear my ardent wooing. There, isn't that more romantic? Tenor. Fain with you I'd share your nest, sweetheart, I implore you. Let me come and at your breast, vow that I adore you. Let me come and at your breast. romantic of you, dear, but really, you only pay attention to me when you're jealous. Well, that's not true, Rosalinda. I... Who is it? It's your lawyer. Well, Blint. Good evening. I've come to accompany you to jail. <laughs> How do you like this? A lawyer's supposed to keep you out of jail. This one's putting me in one. Darling, it's only for five days. No, not five days. I pleaded with the judge, and he changed your sentence. Now, that's what I call a smart lawyer. Just overnight, eh? No. He made it eight days. <laughs> eight days? Well, a 
at least I'll know where you are during that time. Hmm. For eight deals in jail, I could have hit that tenor a little harder. Who would think that any lawyer would betray his own employer? Really, that's too much for me. Goodness me. We shall see. When I thought my case was ended, worse it got instead of mended. And the guilty one is he. You mean me. Really, he? How can it be? Yes, he's the one to blame. You'll see. Just what took place? We lost the case. I'll soon be jailed. You mean you failed. What will you do? I wish I knew. Let me propose a thing or two. If that's a jest, I must protest your sense of humor is revolting. It seems you want to be insulting. Be calm and stage control your rage. Like this fool, I'm very cool. Your husband should go back to school. You stutter over every word. Or slander I have never heard. Don't tell me you complain. Now you insult again. You give me such a pain. You must be quite insane. You, you talk like you had no you brain and turn like 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 just like a weather vane. You broke so please don't start again. That you should go before the landlord tells you so. Yes, she is right. You better go. I think it best. Oh, so, so, so. I think it best. But what a go. You should go. There is the door. No, 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 Well, all I've got to say is it's no use crying over a spilt tenor. Now, uh, kiss your wife, and let's get to jail. All right. Kiss me goodbye, Rosalinda, my darling. Oh, Henry. Hmm. Mm -mm. You miss me? Oh, I don't know what I'll do without you. Mm -mm. Mm. You mean I have to give this up for eight days and nights? Oh, Jiminy. I don't think I'll be able to bear it. I do so hate to eat alone. <laughs> For eight long days alone here within this empty room. Oh, how I'll weep and moan, dear, when you will meet your doom. My sorrow is past bearing. Your darling voice I miss Ah, oh, I am near despairing How sad a parting this My thoughts will round you harbor When meals I send at lunch When dishes I unfurl At breakfast and at lunch And when my tea story about my having to go to jail. Because I can really go on a toot now and Rosalinda won't check up on me for one second. Oh, but be careful. <laughs> careful? Why, I'm going to the grand ball tonight and it will be just like my bachelor days again. I can flirt with every girl in the place. <laughs> Rosalinda will find out about it. No, sir. 
I'll go as, well, the Marquis Renard. Well, at least do me one favor. Leave your watch at home. My watch? Yes, the watch that chimes. Every time you dangle that uh, come-hither machine in front of a pr pretty girl's eyes, she forgets what time it is. Well, I, I won't use the watch. Merely my charm. And perhaps pink champagne. And a few soft words in this manner. Drink, my sweetheart, drink with me. Wine will make your heart feel free. When your heart beats strong and true, all things will seem clear to you. You will see that joys don't last. See that love's a dream. See that vows are broken fast. Oh, not what they see. All too fleeting, all too brief. Laughter is and happiness. But in wine you'll find relief through forgetfulness. Happy he, happy she. Forget what cannot be Fortune's kiss Brings you bliss If you remember this Oh, happy he Happy she Who forget what cannot be Fortune's kiss brings you bliss if you remember this. Now, Blint, we're off to the ball. Not him, not him, Rosalinda. Yes, Adele? Could you give me the evening off, madame? Well, you get more evenings off than any other maid in Vienna. But I've just received word. My aunt is dying. The last time your aunt died, you stayed away for three whole days. She dies slow. <laughs> or could it be that you want to go through the grand ball tonight? Well... You stay here and work. Poor auntie. It'll be the first time she'll have to die without me. <laughs> Madam Rosalinda... If you let me off, I'll tell you a secret I just overheard. That depends on the secret. All right. Your husband isn't going to jail at all. He's going to the ball. Disguised as a, a bachelor, as Marquis Renard. I overheard him just now. Why, the scoundrel. Adele, you're going to that ball as my lady and waiting. <gasps> oh. If he can be a marquis, why, I'll be a, a countess. A countess? Yes, the mysterious Countess Umantazi of Hungary. Oh. How's that for double-crossing a double-crosser?
here's Act Two of Rosalinda, starring Gordon McRae as Henry Eisenstein and Anna Mary Dickey as his lovely wife, Rosalinda. Both have gone to the grand ball in disguise. Henry is the Marquis Reynard, and Rosalinda as the Hungarian Countess Humantazi. Won't you uh, join us at the ball? What a sight, what a delight, is the ball the prince is giving. What a joy to be living on a night so gay and bright. What a story out of fairyland to us, it all seems very grand. As a charming host on this night, we our handsome prince shall see. When he comes, let us all sing his praise in the words on his breast. When it's on, so to dance, when it's song and song and dancing, when he fights, so dancing as the wine and song and dance. <laughs> Flynn's old boy, what a wonderful party. Are you drinking all that pink champagne because you want to forget? Certainly. I want to forget I'm thirsty. <laughs> Flint. Uh, yes, sir? Who is that ravishing-looking creature in the silver mask? Oh, that's the Countess Humantazi, Hungarian. What a figure. What grace and charm. Haven't you ever met her? How could I tie down the way I am? You've been doing fine with Fifi, uh, the ballet dancer. Ah, uh, but compared with that beauty, Fifi is a wooden elephant. Excuse me, I'm going to ask her to dance. May I present myself, Countess? I am the Marquis Renard. And I should be honored if you would dance with me. Would you, Countess? Again. <laughs> That's uh, French, isn't it? No, no, it is Hungarian. It means yes. I'm glad. Shall we dance? Ah, you waltz like a dream, Countess. The party came to life the moment you entered. But as I came in, you seem to be enjoying yourself very much. Oh, oh that, that was Fifi. She doesn't mean a thing. Oh, I see. Uh, is she your wife? Oh, I'm not married. You're not? Not really. You mean, uh, not happily? That's it. Not happily. What a shame. Now, don't misunderstand me. My wife and I have uh, an agreement. Does she know about this? Well, it's, you might say, a, a silent agreement. <laughs> She's more of a homebody. Oh. Yes. You see, I'm a different type. I... I need the whip of adventure, romance, change. Imagine me, day in and day out, looking at the same face. Unthinkable. Oh, I knew you'd understand. Countess, from the moment our eyes met, I, I had the feeling that I had found a kindred soul. You practically described my own life. <laughs> Remarkable. The only difference is my husband and I have no agreement whatsoever. Yes, I know the type, dull and possessive. Yes, that's <laughs> that's why I'm divorcing him. Well, you certainly should. He sounds horrible. Doesn't he? Why don't you give me a chance to make you forget your husband? Oh, I wish you could. But, my dear Marquis, how do you know who I really am? Under this mask, I might be your wife's maid. Adele? No, uh, Monsieur le Marquis, you've made a great, laughable error. Surely you know a great lady from a lady's maid. My dear Marquis, surely you see how rude you've been and let's be frank. Take my advice, next time look twice when judging a lady's rank. My delicate hand appears to find <laughs> to well turn to this anchor of mine. <laughs> my language and my phrasing, my waistline, most amazing, would surely not be fit a little less. 
My apologies, Madame La Countess. I know now just who you are. You do? Certainly. I can tell by your entire bearing that you are a countess. Now may I distract you further with this, this watch of mine? Your watch? Yes. Listen. Listen to it chime. Oh. Come. I'll show you. It works much better outside. No. I think it will work perfectly all right here. Oh, Countess, you've made me forget every other woman I've ever known. Her whole bearing is delicious, and her figure most propitious. Hands so brittle, feet so little, all these treasures kiss I would if I only knew I could. Sitting in his prison, he has come here bent on treason, thinks of kissing while he's missing from his dungeon for the night. You'll be punished for the slight. You'll be punished for this light. If your magic beauty vanished, how sad and grieved I'd be. But my fears would soon be banished. If you lift your mask for me. Doubt me when I swear my good will you will be scorning if you touch the mask I wear. All his sighs, half denying, and his staring, half declaring, so his he's preparing to retreat. By my questions, very soon I've been tested. I shall see you what my fate I will be. Very soon, very now, soon now, I'll discover. I'll discover Your watch is very tantalizing, my dear Marquis, but it does not tantalize me. You're the rarest woman I've ever met. Tell me who you are. Take off your mask and, and let me see for the first time your lovely, lovely face. All right, Monsieur le Marquis, I remove this mask and I am simply... Rosalinda! <laughs> I'm not really married, Countess. I need the whip of adventure. But, but, but... Romance. But change. Sweet. No, no, no. Well, no. you're going to get that change. Rosalinda... The waltz is beginning. I, I'd like to ask you two questions. Yes. First, will you honor me with this dance? And second, when you finish divorcing that moronic, imbecilic, stupid husband of yours, would you marry me? I might, under one condition. Anything. Throw away that watch. Watch? Watch. No watch. Uh, in exchange, I'll never listen to another tenor again as long as I live. It's a bargain. Now let's waltz, my sweet, and show everybody how much in love two married people can be. Oh, what a night, what a night, what sight. Wine and romance made our hearts feel light. If every night were like this, so bright. Night would be a sheer delight. Then every night would be a sheer, sheer Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. 
Anna Mary Dickey will return in just a moment. And our thanks to the other members of the cast, Sandy Gould, William Reeve, and Howard McNair, and to our entire company. The adaptation of the Johann Strauss music for Rosalinda is by Eric Wolfgang Korngold. Paul Kirby is the author of the lyrics. The book by Gottfried Reinhardt and John Meehan, Jr., and was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. Say, folks, if you ever get to wondering about how much freight rates have to do with the prices you pay for things you buy, here's something to bear in mind. Prices went up before freight rates did, and they've gone up far more with the result that freight rates, which before World War II were only a small fraction of the cost of commodities, are a still smaller fraction of today's prices. As a matter of fact, railroad freight charges are lower today in proportion to prices generally than they were before World War II and are just about as low as they have ever been in entire history. And now here again is lovely Anna Mary Dickey. Thank you, Gordon. It was wonderful fun playing Rosalinda. Oh, you were an angel, Anna Mary. Yes, and you were a devil, Gordon. (laughs) But the kind of devil that women adore. Is it time to say goodbye? I wouldn't know. I threw away my watch. (laughs) (laughs) What are you singing coast to coast next week, Gordon? Well, spring is in the air, and so we thought it would be an appropriate time for apple blossoms. And lovely Dorothy Kirsten will be our star. I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Anna Mary. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Rosalinda was presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can currently be seen starring in Warner Brothers' West Point Story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff. And our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Now, good night for the American Railroads. And stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Listen to the voice of Firestone. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.